A warm greeting. Today is Monday, May 26, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. The Atlantic hurricane season officially begins on Sunday, which means we should all be prepared for what is expected to be a more active than normal season. But in this video, I want to talk a bit about the area we'll be monitoring at the start of the hurricane season to try to determine where the first tropical cyclone of the Atlantic season could potentially form. Before diving into that topic, I want to mention that we already have the first invest of the Eastern Pacific hurricane season, Invest 90, which has been designated by the National Hurricane Center. It is associated with a low-pressure area located south of Guerrero, which has a high chance of becoming Tropical Storm Alvin within the next seven days as it moves west-northwest. And although for now it is projected to stay away from the western coast of Mexico, it is important for residents of Baja California Sur, Sinaloa, Nayarit, Colima, and Jalisco to stay informed about its development, even though it currently appears it may dissipate before reaching these areas. If you'd like more details about this forecast, I invite you to check out the video I recorded yesterday related to this system. Tomorrow, I'll be recording another video to provide an update on the forecast. Now, returning to the Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico, and the Atlantic currently, and as is typical during the month of May, there is no threat of cyclonic formation. However, this could change by the second week of June, as we have some indicators suggesting that the Western Caribbean Sea or the Gulf of Mexico could see the formation of a low-pressure area with potential for development. And to provide an update on the sea surface temperature anomalies, I want to point out that conditions in the Niño 3.4 region continue to reflect a typical ENSO-neutral pattern. For the peak of the season, neutral conditions are expected to continue, and some models even show a possible return of La Niña. Regardless of whether we have La Niña or neutral conditions, this tends to reduce wind shear in the Atlantic, which is one of the main reasons why we are forecasting a more active than normal hurricane season. Also, take a look at how, across the tropical Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, and the southwestern Atlantic sea surface temperatures remain above normal. This is another factor that, if it persists, could contribute to a more active hurricane season. However, the good news is that sea surface temperatures in the main development region, MDR, are currently lower than what was recorded last year. This could help somewhat to moderate tropical cyclone activity this year. Still, something we've observed over the past few weeks is that the Gulf of Mexico and the southwestern Atlantic have warmed significantly, and this could influence where and when the first tropical storm of the season might form. I also want you to take a look at the Ensemble of American Models, which continue to show a possible return of La Nina for the peak of the season, along with warmer-than-normal sea surface temperatures across the North Atlantic. If this projection holds, these are conditions that can lead to above-normal tropical cyclone activity in the Atlantic. That's why there is both consensus and near-unanimity that this Atlantic hurricane season is expected to be at least somewhat more active than average. Now let's take a look at how sea surface temperature anomalies have evolved. We'll start by looking at the average anomalies across the main development region, which stretches from the Caribbean to Africa. In blue, you can see how temperatures have varied over the past few months. Note that although we are currently seeing above-normal temperatures on average, the waters are definitely cooler than what was recorded in 2023 and 2024, the latter of which set records for the warmest sea surface temperatures we've seen. We're seeing a similar pattern in the Caribbean Sea, where average sea surface temperatures are warmer than normal and close to what was recorded in 2023, but nearly 1 degree Celsius cooler than what we observed in 2024. So, while on one hand it's concerning that sea surface temperatures are above normal, at least they are not as high as last year. Now then, a very noticeable change that we have seen over the past few weeks is that the Gulf of Mexico has experienced significant sea surface warming, mostly caused by a heat wave affecting the southeastern and southern United States. You can see that since the first week of May, the warming of the waters has been quite dramatic, and currently, temperatures are nearing the historical record that was set last year, in 2024. So we're closely monitoring how temperatures continue to evolve in this area particularly because this is precisely the region that sometimes sees tropical cyclone development during the first 10 days of June, although this is somewhat uncommon. Keep in mind that in the last 170 years, only 33 tropical cyclones have formed during that period. But when they do form early, it's typically in the Western Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, or near the Northern Bahamas. The big question is whether we'll see early cyclone development this year during the first half of June. That is a possibility mainly because a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation is projected to move across the eastern Pacific and Caribbean during the second and third week of June. This could result in more favorable conditions for tropical cyclone formation, either in the eastern Pacific, the Gulf of Mexico, or the western Caribbean. In the next image, you can see upper-level velocity potential anomalies, 
where the green and blue colors represent low pressure and atmospheric instability, which early in the season is often what allows cyclone formation either in the eastern Pacific or the western Atlantic. And although we still have several weeks to go and long-range forecasts aren't precise, we can say there are some early signals suggesting that the Gulf of Mexico or the Western Caribbean could potentially see the formation of a low-pressure system with development potential. In fact, you can see that the ensemble members of the European model are showing the possibility of cyclonic development south of Mexico, or possibly in parts of the Western Caribbean Sea or the Gulf of Mexico, after the first week of June. The important thing is that, for now, there's no tropical threat in the Atlantic, Caribbean, or Gulf of Mexico, so we can remain at ease for the moment. However, We'll be closely monitoring how sea surface temperatures evolve, as well as updates on the movement of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, to see if its passage through the Caribbean could trigger the formation of a tropical cyclone. Well, that's all for this video. But before I go, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. First, don't forget to give this video a like, then click the red button to subscribe, and finally click the bell so you get notified when I post new videos. Well, this is where I'll say goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow with an update on the forecast for Invest90 which will very likely become Tropical Storm Alvin. See you later.